One Christmas morning, a man named Gawain is woken up by his lover named Essel. After getting up, he follows her around, stumbling through the brothel to find his clothes. Afterward, he goes to the king's court where he is greeted by his mother. As it turns out, Gawain is the nephew of King Arthur. After resting, he prepares to attend the feast for Christmas. Seeing his mother is not dressed up for the occasion, Gawain asks if she will not come. His mother is not in the mood for any festivity and tells Gawain to just enjoy himself in the celebration. Upon arriving at the feast, he is called by the king. He asks Gawain where his mother is, to which he answers that she is not feeling well. Then, the king invites him to sit beside him at the round table, the famous table where King Arthur and his knights congregate. Gawain respectfully declines the offer, saying that it doesn't belong to him, but the king insists. The king's family somewhat drifted apart from each other. So, this Christmas, the king wants to make amends to his family, aiming to rebuild their relationship. Meanwhile, in a tower elsewhere in the kingdom, Gawain's mother is performing a ritual with other witches. As the king addresses the people at the round table, the witches finish the ritual. Just then, a mysterious green knight shows up at the feast. He is a man with skin like a tree. As the green knight enters the castle, all the soldiers at the table are alerted, but the king orders them to stand down. When the green knight hands the king a letter, the queen takes it from his hand and reads it aloud. The green knight possesses the queen as she starts reading the letter. According to the letter, he is challenging them to a Christmas game. Whoever of the king's knights can enter the game and engage in battle with the green knight. If any of them manages to land a blow against him, he will receive his weapon, the green axe. But upon winning the game, the champion must go to the Green Knight at the Green Chapel after one year. Then, he should bow down to the Green Knight, who will strike the champion in return. However, whether it will be a shallow cut or a deadly blow will depend on how the champion manages to wound him. Just then, they will part ways bound with trust and friendship. After the Queen reads the letter, the King faces the Green Knight and says he cannot commit to the challenge himself but he assures that someone from his knights will battle the mysterious knight on his terms. That is when Gawain speaks up, saying that he will be fighting the Green Knight. The king reminds Gawain that it is only a game, but Gawain wants to take the challenge seriously. As such, the king lends his sword to Gawain. As the two fighters step in the middle, the Green Knight puts his axe down. Suddenly, the grass starts to grow around the axe. Gawain thinks that the knight is tricking him. Nervous, he asks what the green knight wants him to do. The mysterious knight bends down, offering his head to Gawain. As uncertainty and anxiety cloud his mind, Gawain declares to everyone that they should remember this Christmas day, and he decapitates the green knight. Silence fills the air, and everyone stares in horror as the headless knight stands up to pick up his head. When the Green Knight opens his eyes, he looks at Gawain and laughs maniacally as the man just sealed his fate one year from now. Gawain's mother collapses on the floor upon knowing what her son has done. After the Green Knight leaves, everyone cheers for Gawain except for the King and Queen, worrying what will happen to him in due time. Quick time has passed and Christmas is nearing once again. The children are watching a paper puppet show about the tale of Gawain versus the Green Knight. Gawain and his tale are popularized everywhere. Meanwhile, Gawain lives the same life as before. He maintains his relationship with Essel and still spends time with commoners in their kingdom. But fame is always following him around. As an old man recognizes him, he starts to retell the tale of Gawain. When a man exclaims that his mother is a witch, he loses his cool and beats up the man. He comes home drunk and, to his surprise, the king is at their home. After his mother leaves, the king asks Gawain what his plans are for the coming Christmas day. He then reminds his nephew that the game is not yet done. Gawain thinks that the game was just a hoax, but in reality, he is afraid of death. 
He then asks the king why he's doing all of this for him. The king answers that he just wants greatness for his nephew. However, Gawain thinks that he is unworthy of any greatness. The end of the puppet show portrays the death of Gawain by decapitation at the hands of the Green Knight. The next day, the priest blesses the green axe that Gawain will be using in his quest. At the same time, his mother, along with the witches, chants a ritual and makes a green girdle for him. Essel tries to convince Gawain not to go, but Gawain is finally determined to seek whether there is greatness waiting for him or none. As he prepares himself, his mother gives him the girdle and promises that he will not be harmed. On his way out of the kingdom, some children follow him and wish him good luck on his journey. When the night falls, Gawain sees the bell that Essel gave him amongst his things. Seeing this, he remembers the last conversation he had with her before he left. She asks Gawain if he will marry her, but the man cannot answer. Morning comes and Gawain continues on his journey. He reaches the woods where he finds a dead body of a knight. When he gets out of the woods, the place turns out to be a battlefield and it is full of dead bodies. Gawain comes across a young scavenger. The scavenger tags along with Gawain while blabbering things out. Then he asks Gawain where he is heading. When Gawain says he is going to the Green Chapel, the scavenger points him to a stream that leads to the chapel. He also adds that it will take him at least a day and a half before he gets there. Thanking the young man, Gawain heads out to the stream that the scavenger is talking about, but the scavenger stops him and asks for payment. Gawain then tosses a coin to the young man and leaves. However, all of it is just a trick because the scavenger and his two siblings ambush him. They strip Gawain of his armor and tie him up. Then, they play with his things and the scavenger finds the axe. Holding the axe, he mocks Gawain that he will finish the quest for him. Then. He takes off with the horse and leaves with his siblings, who quickly run after him. When they are gone, Gawain crawls to his sword and uses it to free himself. Although he cuts himself in the process, Gawain doesn't waste time and chases after the siblings. He tries to call his horse, but he gets no response. Night falls and he still has no luck in finding the siblings. Yet, he's lucky enough to find an abandoned cottage. After carefully searching the place and finding no one, Gawain decides to rest on the bed. Just then, he is suddenly awakened by a young woman named Winifred. Thinking that he might rudely barge into someone's house and bed, Gawain immediately stands up to leave. But Winifred stops him and asks if her father sent him. Gawain respectfully denies it, saying that he's just a lost traveler. Hearing this, Winifred says she is lost too. As it turns out, Winifred is a spirit, and she asks for Gawain's help to retrieve her head in the pond. Winifred explains that a lord, who was also lost, came into the cottage to seek shelter. He then tried to sleep with her, but she resisted. Later that night, the lord returned and cut her head off. Although there is nothing that Winifred can repay him, Gawain still decides to help her. After getting Winifred's skull, Gawain resurfaces but finds no one waiting for him. He gets back inside the cottage and finally sees Winifred's remains. Then suddenly, the skull in his hand turns into an actual decapitated head of Winifred. Scared, he drops her head on the floor, but the head speaks and tells Gawain that the Green Knight is someone he is acquainted with. Although confused by what Winifred told him, he picks up the skull. He places it on the bed along with Winifred's remains so she could finally rest in peace. As the sun rises, Gawain is surprised to see that the green axe has returned to him. He then resumes his journey to find the green chapel. But the current weather is not in his favor, so Gawain seeks shelter in a cave. When he is trying to start a fire, he sees a fox coming into the cave. He tries to make the fox go away, but it just comes back. Later on, he befriends the fox and it follows him as he continues traveling. Unfortunately, he can't find a place to settle the night before the sun goes down. Also, he's so hungry that he eats a mushroom he sees without thinking if it is safe to eat or not. Gawain then starts hallucinating about the Green Knight. The next day, Gawain and the fox see a group of giants. 
tired from all the walking, Gawain tries his luck and asks the giant if he can ride on her shoulder. Fortunately, the man and giant cannot comprehend each other. When the giant is about to grab Gawain, the fox steps in front of it and begins to howl. The giant stops and leaves the man and the fox. After some time, another rainy night has arrived and Gawain is getting weaker and weaker. Luckily, he and the fox find a castle. As soon as the door opens, the lord of the place welcomes him. But due to hunger and weakness, he faints on the floor. Gawain wakes up the next morning and sees the man from last night in the room. Seeing Gawain freaking out, the lord calms him down. Gawain immediately asks for the date to which the Lord answers that it's December 21st. Weirdly, the Lord also knows his name. Afterward, the Lord brings Gawain to the dining table where he meets the Lord's lady and an old woman with a blindfold. But to his surprise, the lady looks exactly like Essel. As it turns out, no Gawain because of the tale of his battle against the Green Knight. However, knowing that Christmas is only four days away, Gawain is in a hurry to find the Green Chapel. That is when the Lord reveals to him that the Green Chapel that he is looking for is just near his castle. It is also located just down the river and it would not take a day to reach it. The Lord offers him to rest for a while in his castle, promising that on Christmas Day they will send him to the Green Chapel by nightfall. After a while, Gawain roams around the castle and ends up in the library. The lady, who finds him in the library, gives him a book. She also exhibits a flirtatious demeanor toward him. Then, she paints a picture of him. Looking at it, Gawain is mesmerized by the upside-down portrait that the lady made. At this time, the lady sees the bell necklace that Gawain is wearing. Asked about it, the man says that it's just a token. Hearing this, she snaps it off his neck and leaves. When the Lord comes home from hunting, he brings Gawain a dead deer as a gift, saying that he could take it on his journey back home. After a while, the Lord makes a deal with Gawain. In exchange for all his hunts, Gawain should give him whatever he receives from his castle. Puzzled, Gawain asks what he can receive from the castle that is not owned by the Lord. But even the Lord doesn't know what he is actually talking about. According to him, the castle is full of strange things, just like the world. The lady butts in and asks why the knight is green. Gawain thinks that the green knight is otherworldly, but the lady argues that green is the color of the earth. She points out that after everything is gone, grass and moss will grow and green will spread all over. The lord then asks what Gawain hopes to get after his quest and he reluctantly says honor. The lord is also skeptical that a man can suddenly become honorable just by finishing one quest. A little later, the old woman approaches Gawain and feels his face. After that, she heads out without saying a word, leaving Gawain puzzled. The next day, Gawain wakes up and finds the lady in his room. Seeing him awake, she begins flirting with him. Then, she shows him a green girdle that she made. Just like the one his mother made, the girdle also has an enchantment that will protect him as long as he wears it. Asking if he wants it, the lady gets on top of Gawain. After the lady says the exact words that his mother told him before, Gawain gives in to the lady's seduction. However, the lady mocks him that he is not a knight. When the lady leaves, Gawain finally notices the old lady at the other side of the room. Gawain quickly dresses and leaves the castle. In the forest, Gawain comes across the Lord. Gawain says that he needs to go to the Green Chapel now. Just then, the Lord asks if Gawain wishes to give him something as part of their deal last night. The Lord approaches and suddenly kisses Gawain. Controlling his temper, Gawain respectfully tells the Lord to let go of him. After that, when Gawain is about to leave, the Lord shows him his fox. Having no idea that the fox belongs to Gawain, he says that he caught it earlier and is about to give it to him. But since he is leaving already, the Lord lets it go. Gawain and the fox continue their way, but when they reach the river, the fox suddenly speaks and tries to convince Gawain to turn back. Gawain says he needs to face his destiny. The fox then orders him to leave his girdle if he truly wants to face the green knight. Pissed, Gawain swings the green axe at it, but the fox manages to evade. He tells it to go away as he continues his journey alone. Finally, Gawain reaches the green chapel. 
There, he finds the Green Knight hibernating while covered in plants. He puts down the green axe and slowly backs away from the knight. He sits down, quietly waiting for his fate. When Christmas morning finally comes, the green knight wakes up. When the green knight picks up the axe, Gawain kneels down, preparing to fulfill his end of the game. The knight is about to swing his axe, but Gawain flinches. He is still afraid of dying, and not a year nor a hundred years of preparation can prepare him for death. He tries to calm himself down, but he cannot stop his tears from flowing. After Gawain says that he is ready, the Green Knight is about to hack his head off, but he changes his mind again. Standing up, he asks the Green Knight if this is really just all there is to the game, to which the Knight confirms. Once again, Gawain kneels down, but for the third time, he chickens out. This time, he runs away from the Green Knight, saying that he's not yet ready to die. And to his surprise, his horse is already waiting for him outside. Gawain then travels back home to their kingdom. Upon seeing her son, Gawain's mother immediately attends to him and cleans him. Essel is also happy to see Gawain back home alive. Afterward, Gawain goes to the sick king, who blesses him as the new king. As the previous king and queen succumb to their death, King Gawain is officially crowned as the new king. After some time, Essel gives birth to their child, but King Gawain can't even give off a smile. When an old man approaches Essel, she immediately clings to her baby. Unfortunately, the child is still taken away from her as she crawls to the ground, trying to chase King Gawain and their baby. He abandons Essel and marries a noblewoman instead. During their first night together, King Gawain's wife tries to remove the girdle, but he stops her. After growing up, his son with Essel joins the knights and dies in battle. As the years go by, King Gawain becomes a despised king as his kingdom and people are becoming poorer. He once sees Essel in the crowd who has nothing but hatred for him. Later that night, he looks over his kingdom which is being attacked by enemies. Shortly, when the castle is about to be stormed by enemies, his family abandons him, even his mother. Just then, the king finally removes his girdle. All of a sudden, his head falls off from his shoulders, and the crown bounces off nearby. That is when Gawain is taken back to reality at the Green Chapel. As the Green Knight is about to chop off his head, he stops him for a while to remove his girdle. And at that moment, the Green Knight sheds Gawain's tears away. Commending his bravery, he puts his finger into Gawain's neck and motions a cutting action. For his honesty and bravery, Gawain is finally freed from their game. The movie ends with a little girl playing with King Gawain's crown.